All right, this is review for unit one, test two. Let's minimize that. So we're going to first solve for x in each of the problems below to show your work. You are going to cross multiply. So 7.5 times 4 is going to be 30. And then 10 times x is, well, 10x. you got to get x solo, so divide by 10. And 30 divided by 10 is 3. Same thing for b. We're going to cross multiply. 3 times 7 is 21. 21 times x is 21x. Divide by 21 from both sides to get x solo. And we get 1. And C, even though that's a binomial in the bottom, we're going to need to distribute. But again, cross multiply. So 1 times 5x is 5x. And we were, we're going to have 2 times 3x plus 2. So distribute. 5x equals 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 2 is 4. Uh, we already have an x by itself on the left hand side, kind of, so we're going to just subtract 6x from both sides. So 5 minus 6 is a negative 1x. And then we're going to bring down the 4. To get rid of the negative 1, we're going to divide. x equals negative 4. Okay? Number two, triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. Solve for X and show your work. We'll always start off with X. Okay, and what's its equivalent? We have D to F, and that's the first and last letters in our similar statement for that triangle. So if we keep the same pattern, A and C, we see that four is gonna be proportional to our X. Let's find some more values. We have 7.5 for E to F. So those are the last two letters. Last two letters over here is BC, so 5. And then from here, again, you would cross multiply. Doing a bunch of cross multiplication on this test. 5 times X, again, 5X. Divide by 5. 30 divided by 5 is 6. Now that was to solve for x. Now it says if triangle ABC is the pre-image, then the scale factor is, well, if you notice, ABC is smaller than DEF. So if the ABC was the pre-image, that means our scale factor, hmm, let me erase that real quick. Our scale factor needs to be greater than 1 because it's getting bigger. Now, we already have our scale factor over here. We use it to solve for x. So let's simplify 7.5 over 5. Again, if you're kind of still struggling with that, you can plug it in your calculator. And Desmos or your Casio will simplify it for you. So 3 over 2. Now, is 3 over 2 greater than 1? Yes. So that means we're okay with that scale factor. It is greater than 1 technically, so it is getting bigger. Number 3 is the same way. We're going to solve for x. Show your work. So, again, start off with x. X is going to be BC, so EF again, 3.5. Then go back to the big triangle. We're going to use 2 over 1. And again, cross multiply. 3.5 times 2 is 7. 1 times X is just on the X. So there's our X, so we can solve for it. Now again, it's asking for the scale factor just like the last one. 
pre-image is still ABC, but this time it's getting smaller, which means our scale factor needs to be less than 1. Well, we can use this 2 over 1 as our scale factor, but the problem is it's greater than 1. And remember, in class we talked about simply flipping it using the reciprocal. That is going to be our scale factor now, 1 half. Just flip the fraction. Number four, on a sunny day, uh, an office building casts a shadow that is 80 feet long. At the same time, a five-foot person casts a six-foot shadow. Determine the height H of the office building to the nearest foot. Show your work. And as you can see in the diagram, we have the sun, the building, and some five-foot person. So it's practically set up in proportions for us already. So H over 5, because they're both representing heights. And then we're going to put our shadows, 80 over 6. And again, you would cross multiply. 6 times H is 6H. 80 times 5 is 500. Divide by 6, because you're trying to get H solo. Again, you can just use your calculator for these bigger numbers. 400, whoops, better delete the old stuff. 400 divided by 6, and we get 66.66667. 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, Obviously, we're going to round that to the nearest foot, which would be a whole number. So we're going to round it to 67. 67 feet. Number five, we got Pentagon A, B, C, D, E is similar to F, G, H, J, K. Find the value of X, show your work. If A, B, C, D, E is a pre-image, the scale factor is blank. Okay, just like those triangles. Again, we'll start off with X. That's E, D. That's the last two letters. The last two letters are going to be J, K, so three. All right. Let's find us a value. I think in class we use 3 and 2. So 3 goes on top, 2 on the bottom. Again, cross multiply. 3 times 3 is 9. And then 2 times x is 2x. Divided by 2. 9 divided by 2 is 4.5. Again, pulling out numbers we already have for the scale factor, we can look at 3 and 2. A, B, C, D, E is getting smaller, so 3 over 2 is too big. It needs to be less than 1, so we do the reciprocal again, 2 thirds. 2 thirds is less than 1, so this is acceptable. <laughs> 6. If square H, I, J, K to the right is dilated by a scale factor of 1 third with the center dilation at 0, 0, what will be the coordinates for point k prime. Show your work. All they care about is k. It's right there. So if you went over 3 and then down 3, k's coordinates is 3, negative 3. Since the center dilation is at the origin, simply just need to multiply this by a third to get our k prime. 3 times a third is 1, and then negative 3 times a third is negative 1. And that's all there is to it. Well, let's try to make a box around it. Boop. Given the pre-image, triangle ABC, to the right, calculate the coordinates of A prime, B prime, C prime. Boop. Get out of here, window security. If the dilation has its center of origin and the scale factor is 3. So, coordinates for A is going to be negative 4, 0. Coordinates for C is going to be 2, 0. And coordinates for B is going to be 2, 3. Just like before, if the center dilation is around the origin, you just need to multiply by the scale factor. So, negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Well, then anything times 0 is just going to be 0. Let's see here. B, we'll use B next. Again, times all that by 3, so 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. And then we go down to C, 
again times three two times three is six and then zero because anything times zero is zero given the pre-image triangle abc to the right draw an image for a third scale dilation with the center dilation being at two zero so let me go ahead and change colors and in fact i'm just going to erase this to get it out of our way So, two zeros right here where C is at. When the center dilation is not at the origin, remember we counted in class to figure out where the new points would be. So, from C, I'm going to count up to B. One, two, three. Same thing headed toward A. One, two, three, four, five, six. And again, you'll multiply by that one third scale factor. Three times a third is again one. Six times a third is two. So you'll simply go from C, count up one, and our new B point, you know, B prime, is going to be two, one. And I'll just write that over here. Let's see, our A, if we went over to the left twice, one, two, well, A is going to be at the origin. I'll put that right here. And C is not going to change because it is the center of dilation. Why would it move? We've talked about that in class. So my new little triangle here, I'll make it green. And since it was a third, it did indeed get smaller. Number nine, given the pre-image triangle DEF, to the right, draw an image for dilation with the scale factor of two and the center of dilation to be zero, zero. C since it's at the origin, that means we just got to multiply. So times 2. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative, uh, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. 3 times 2 is 6. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. 2 times 3 is 6. And 2 times 2 is 4. I'm going to come over here and plot these points. Negative 6, negative 2. That will be our D prime. 6, negative 2. It's right there. That's going to be our E prime. And F will be 6, 4. So come over to 6, up to 4. F prime. And here's our new triangle. Number 10, it says if angle A is congruent or is equal to D, A and D, and angle B and E are congruent or equal to, let's see, could you be sure that the triangles to the right are similar? If so, which triangle postular theorem could you use? Well, we both we have two angles marked, and we do have a postulate for that, which was angle angle. So yes, those two triangles are similar. If you look at number 11, if uh, the measure of angle A and D are congruent, well, I'll mark that, and AC is proportional to DF, remember in class we use the little squiggly worms to show proportional sides, and then they said CB and FE, so CB right here, and FE, well, if we go around the triangle, it spells the donkey postulate. We can't use the donkey postulate. So these are not similar. Number 12, if AB is proportional to DE, again, squiggling worms, AC proportional to DF, and the measure of A is congruent to the measure of angle D. Well, again, it spells it out. Looks like it's going to be SAS, and that is indeed one of our postulates for similarity. 13, same game. A, B, and D, E are proportional. A, C, and D, F are proportional. C, B, and F, E are proportional. All the way around, side, 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 side. 
or I think as some students say, 14. Andy has a Andy has two rectangular gardens. His smaller garden is eight feet long and four feet wide. The larger garden is 12 feet long and six feet wide. Which statement correctly describes Andy's gardens? Well, if you notice here, it says the gardens are only congruent. That doesn't make sense because we clearly see there are different sizes. So we're going to scratch that one out. The gardens are similar and congruent. That's pure nonsense. The gardens are congruent but not similar. Well, we just said they're not congruent. The gardens are similar but not congruent. Makes the most sense. 15, Pentagon JKLMN. We are going to label it like this. You got to go clockwise and or counterclockwise when you put these letters in the vertices, which I put L twice, so that makes no sense. There you go, M, N. Same thing for the Pentagon, similar to STUVM. S, T, U, V, did I say M? W. A little dyslexic over here. If NJ is 4, WS is 3, JK is 5, and ST, well, they want us to find ST, so I'll put an X right there. Well, since we just created these pentagons, we've got labels in the right spot. Pretty much can just go X over 4 and 3 over 5. Cross multiply. 4 times 3 is 12. 5x, 5 times, well, x times 5 is 5x, divide by 5. And again, you can use your calculator. 12 divided by 5 gives us 2.4. 16. Triangle EFG is similar to triangle LNM. Find LN. We'll put a little X there. Same thing. I know E, G, and LN are proportional to each other, so I'm going to do X over 7. Should be equal to 2 MN and FG, so 2 over 4. And again, cross multiply. 2 times 7 is 14. 4 times X is 4X. Divide by 4. Let's see what x divided by 4 is. Get your calculator. Not x divided by 4. 14. 14 divided by 4. 3.5. 17. Andy is building a model train. The real train has a wheel diameter of 5 feet and a length of 25 feet. If the model has a length of 10 inches, what is the model's wheel diameter? Give your answer in a fraction in simplest form with the units. So I'm going to draw us a little train real quick. Please do not judge my train. It's a spur of the moment kind of artwork. Smokestack, shoe fire. That is the best train on the planet. I want to draw a little baby train now. This is not going to be so great, but that's okay. So, little diameter for the big guy is 5 feet, but its length is 25 feet. The little model, this will be the little model right here. Call me a little error to show that. If his model has a length of 10 inches, so the model is 10 inches long. And we need to find the wheel diameter. So, let's see here. It's pretty much already kind of set up as a proportion. We can do 5 over 25. X over 10. And I can just simply cross multiply. 25X. 5 times 10 is 50. Divide by 25, x equals 2 inches. 18, what does it mean for two figures to be similar? We say this a thousand million times. Same shape, 
different sizes. Nineteen. If BE is proportional to DE, BE, DE, and AE is proportional to CE, you know, to have the same ratios. Are triangles ABE and EDC similar? If so, what postulate or theorem can you use to justify your answer? Well, remember, we have vertical angles right here. So with that, we have a form of SAS. Side, angle, side. 20, you are given two triangles and the information that three pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. Three pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. What other information do you need to have to conclude that the triangles are similar? We don't need any more because that's the angle angle postulate. 21. If triangle ABC to the left is similar to DEF, and we have a measure angle for A to be 50, and the measure of angle E, which is over here, to be 70, what is C? Well, if these triangles are similar, that means that 70 for E is going to be 70 for B. And now that I have those two, we can subtract that from 180 to get C. Well, 70 plus 50 is 120, and if we take that and subtract it from the 180, we get 60 degrees. You could say C is 60, so is F, because they are similar. 22, if triangle ABC to the right is dilated by a scale factor of 2, with the CERN dilation to the origin, what will be the coordinates for points A prime, B prime, and C prime, and they want us to draw it? Let me change colors here real quick. Let's see, A is 0, 0, so 0, 0 times 2 is 0, 0. B is going to be 0, 3 times by 2 would be 0, 6. And then if we go to C, C is 2, 0 times 2 would be 4, 0. And again, to trace the new image... Well, scale factor 2, the triangle did get bigger, so we're doing the right thing. Oops, now was C prime. A rectangle, a rectangle has dimensions, I thought I had this as a garden question. A rectangle has dimensions 7 by 12 feet. Which of the dimensions below describe the rectangle that is similar to the rectangle? In class, we got in a huge argument, but if you would notice, C both of those dimensions are being multiplied by 3. 7 times 3 is 21, and 12 times 3 is 36. You got in an argument in class because this one is only by a scale factor of 3, while this 48 means it would have had a scale factor of 4. They're not the same. This is why D is not the answer. Same can be said about B. It was 2 and 3. That's not going to work either. And well, A is just far-fetched. So C is the one that makes the most sense. 24. Again, these are mid-segments. We have a special postulate, or excuse me, a theorem for this. You simply just got to multiply by 2 to work your way outside the triangle there. So 24 times 2 is 48. And over here, we already have the number on the outside, and you could argue we're going back inside. So the opposite of that would be multiplying by a half, or simply dividing by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. Almost done. Solve for x in the diagram below. Show your work. Again, we have uh, the side splitting segment theorem. So we can do x over 25, 10 over 20, and then cross multiply. So that would be 250, 20 times x, divide by 20. Those cancel. Could argue you can cancel the zero, so it's 25 divided by 2, which is 
27. Again, those lines are parallel due to the little triangles there. So we can set up another proportion for this. So 12 over 5 and 15 over x. Cross multiply, 12x. Let's see, 15 times 5, I know two of those make 30. So 60, so it should be 75. Divide by 12. Oh, can't do that one in my head. So 75 divided by, oops, 12, 6.25. Let's go down here. Remember this is when we had a bunch of those theorems. Y'all were flying theorem pretty quick in class. So if we picked X for this one, that'd be AC. So we need DF, which will be 2.3. And then we can just pick the middle, I suppose. I'll just pick five here. We do have a value in the middle here, this mid-segment, or excuse me, the median is what this is called. So we're going to put a three here. So cross multiply. 3x. Ooh, I don't know that one. 2.3. Oop, got to delete the old stuff. 2.3 times 5, and we get 11.5. And divide that by 3. Go back to my calculator. 11.5 divide by 3, and we get 3.833333. So I'm just going to go, yeah, I'll put it right here, 3.83. There were no specific directions on what to round it to. 29, again, we're just going to start off with X. I think these are getting real easy for us. We're going to pick X here, and we're going to do this 2.5 on this angle bisector. And then we got to pick a value. Today, a lot of kids said 10, but that's AC. If we look at DF, we don't have a value, so we can't pick 10. We're going to pick 15. So 15 on top, and 6 would be its equivalent side, so... We're going to use 6. Anyway, 15 times 2.5 is 37.5. And then 6 times x is 6x. We're going to divide by 6. Let's go back to our little calculator there. Let's 3, excuse me, 37.5 divided by... Oh, don't forgot that number, 6. That's not where I need you to be. Get back down there. Nope. 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 Get back in there. There we go. 6.25. Boom. We are almost done, ladies and gentlemen. In order to create a median for triangle XYZ, point W would have to be a, it's right smack dab in the middle, so it must be a midpoint for Z, uh, of ZX, excuse me. And you would have to connect points Y and W. This says to demonstrate it, so I'm just going to draw a line right here. All done. 31, label, label, label. You need to realize where these are at. X, Z is right here this guy so that means it's the long leg of the medium triangle put a little note there wz is down here and this is going to be the short leg of the medium triangle so i'll change colors if we focus on this yz that's right here that's going to be the short leg, so we must be focusing on the smaller triangle out of all three of these guys. The next call would be for the long leg of the small triangle. Remember, they share the same side, so it must be WZ. Well, that just leaves, let's see, we got the small one, the medium one, so we're looking at the large one. They're using XW, which is up here. So that should be the long leg, and it is, because all the long legs are on top. So we need to pick the short leg for the big triangle. 
and that'd be this side because this would be the hypotenuse so we need this guy which is from W to Y label 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 we need to label these things 32 the diagram below shows three triangles three similar triangles find the length of side BD that's incorrect should have said CD so my apologies for that hence identify the short long legs and the hypotenuse for each of the triangles show your work again notice where x is it's from c to d so this is going to be the long leg of the medium triangle 12 will be the short leg of the medium triangle i'll change colors which means i got some values over here this would be the short leg of the small triangle and the long leg of the small triangle so if i picked x i'm putting the long leg on top so I'll find the long leg for the smaller triangle, which is 12. Again, this should equal the short leg, which is going to be 12, over short leg from the smaller one, 9. Again, we've gone over how these can be set up four different ways, but you should get the same answer no matter what. Cross multiply, 12 times 12 is 144. Well, the computer is, oh, there you go. Huh. Apparently my pen died. So, 12 times 12 is 144. 9 times x, divide by 9 should be 16 equal x and just to make sure I got a little confuzzled there because my little pen I used for the laptop decided to quit that ain't right it was 9 yep indeed it was 16 one more to go which point of concurrency uh, right here center of the triangle has been constructed below this is the centroid. It's the center of gravity for a triangle. The lines drawn through the triangle are called, we've had this word before, medians. All right, that's it. Study. Catch you later. Bye-bye.